2016 NFL Draft, there was a debate for the number one pick, Goff or Wentz? What about the 6'7 boomer bust out of Memphis? Then there was that kid out of Mississippi State that looked good, but he got a DUI right before the draft. This plummeted his stock. Overall, the 2016 NFL Draft saw 15 quarterbacks selected throughout the seven rounds, which since then has seen everything from Pro Bowlers and Super Bowl appearances to massive busts and dudes who never played a snap, and everything in between. So after the draft back in 2016, what do things look like for the quarterbacks that were selected, and how do they compare historically to the draft classes around them? But before we get started, this video is sponsored by Established Titles. Long before the NFL began, an age-old custom has existed in Scotland, where landowners are referred to as lairds, or lords and ladies in English. And with established titles, you can become a lord or lady. Let me explain. Basically, established titles is a fun and novel way to preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland. They also plant a tree with every order and work with global charities, One Tree Planted, and Trees for the Future to support global reforestation efforts. Established Titles packs you at least one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate in Scotland that comes with an official certificate with a crest. I'm now officially known as Lord KTO, self-appointed oracle, student of history, king of the outro. You can also officially change your name to Lord or Lady and get it on credit cards, plane tickets, you can even get it on your dating profiles. It's an awesome last minute gift, and they even have couple packs that come with adjoining plots of land. When you place an order, your certificate features a unique plot number with which you can see the exact location of your land. And the first 200 people purchasing a title pack using my link will effectively be next to my plot. It's a great time too because Established Titles is actually running a Black Friday sale. Plus, if you use code KTO, you get an additional 10% off. Go to establishedtitles.com slash KTO to get your gifts now and help support the channel. Originally, the Tennessee Titans held the number one pick in 2016, but because they drafted their potential franchise quarterback, Marcus Mariota, the previous year, they seek to trade for more draft assets. And they found a suitor in the Rams, who gave up an enormous amount of picks to move up from 15 to one. And with that pick, they selected the true pocket passer out of Cal, Jared Goff. Goff fit the mold of your typical 2000s pro-style quarterback. Tall, refined in his game, and despite not being overly mobile, he could stand in the pocket, keep his composure, and make any throw. NFL.com compared him to Matt Ryan. But in 2016, the Rams were a bad team. And in the midst of Jeff Fisher on the hot seat and an offense that was struggling, Jared Goff was thrown into the action and went 0-7 as a starter while putting up an abysmal QBR. During this process, Jeff Fisher was eventually fired. People were quick to jump on the Jared Goff's a bust train after that season. But with the team's second year in LA for the 2017 season, they really turned into a Hollywood story. The Rams hired the youngest head coach ever, Sean McVay, and he helped Jared Goff go from a so-called bust to back-to-back -back Pro Bowls and an NFC title in 2018. Goff looked like he was close to entering the elite quarterback discussion as he got ready to face Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. But then we saw the worst Super Bowl I've ever watched. The Rams put up three points, and with Jared Goff as their quarterback, they never looked the same after that. The next two years were an underwhelming performance that eventually pushed LA to look for other options. This led to a blockbuster trade that sent Goff to Detroit in exchange for Matt Stafford. LA would go on to win a Super Bowl in their first year without Goff, while Goff experienced the pains of being a Detroit quarterback. Overall, Goff at this point appears to be an underwhelming first overall pick who became an average level starter. The height of his career seemed to be a product of a great system put together by Sean McVay in 2017 and 2018. Like the Rams, the Eagles also traded up in 2016 to acquire the second overall pick, which they used to draft Carson Wentz. Unlike Goff, Wentz felt like a little more of an unknown. He was huge for a quarterback, coming in at 6'5 and nearly 240 pounds. Sort of like Big Ben with great athleticism. Although he played at smaller division school in North Dakota State, so the level that he played at was a concern. 
with the fact that his throwing motion and mechanics posed a challenge for his next coaching staff. But the Eagles felt that it was a risk worth taking. By year two, Wentz went on to have one of the greatest breakout seasons we've seen from a young player. He was an MVP frontrunner at one point, putting the Eagles in contention for the number one seed, closing in on the playoffs. But as it turned out, Wentz would suffer an injury that would end his season right before the playoffs. This was just devastating news after how his season had gone to that point. And somehow, Nick Foles put together the run of the ages and led the Eagles to a Super Bowl win. With Wentz heralded as the next NFL star quarterback, expectations were through the roof for 2018. But Wentz would regress, get hurt, and his play would fade all the way to horrific levels by 2020. His DVOA, which is an advanced stat for quarterbacks, is among some of the worst of all time. So how did Wentz go from what he was in 2017 to what he was in 2020? Well, first, his questionable mechanics had worsened, which caused his accuracy to fall off a cliff. Next, the injuries mounted up, which affected Wentz physically and mentally as time went on. And lastly, when healthy, he constantly attempted to play hero ball, which drove a wedge between him and the Eagles coaching staff. Ultimately, the divide between these two parties eventually was too far beyond repair. The Eagles drafted Jalen Hurts in 2020, and after poor play, benched Wentz in favor of Hurts. After 2020, the once MVP frontrunner was traded out of Philly after five seasons. Since that trade, he lasted one year with the Colts, then landed in Washington, where, as it appears now, he's most likely never going to be better than a turnover-prone shell of his former self. The Denver Broncos select Paxton Lynch, quarterback, Memphis. For the last first round pick of 2016, the Broncos took a chance on the biggest boomer bust in the draft, Paxton Lynch. Listed at nearly 6 foot 7 and 245 pounds, Lynch was a pure monster at Memphis, displaying all the physical tools necessary to be an NFL star, including the athleticism to run the ball effectively. It was easy to see why the Broncos traded up to draft him in round 1, but on the other side of the coin, he was extremely raw. He was slow in his progressions as a passer, and there were major questions about his maturity off the field. Also, it's never great when your pro comp is Blake Bortles and Brock Osweiler. Throughout the preseason, it was clear that Paxton Lynch was far from being ready to play, missing consistently on throws. Couple that with the fact that head coach Gary Kubiak actually preferred Trevor Simeon, and Lynch was on the bench to start the season. And a few weeks into the year, Simeon sustained an injury, and Lynch would make his first career start the following game. It wasn't great. He showed a lack of pocket awareness, getting sacked six times, along with fumbling twice and throwing a pick. From that point forward, Lynch did very little to help himself out. Plagued by confidence issues, an apparent lack of work ethic, and overall poor performance, Lynch failed to win over his teammates and coaches, and in just two years with the Broncos, he only started four career games. Following a brutal goal line interception, and after an injury that forced him out of the game in his second year, Lynch was seen crying on the sidelines. Perhaps he knew his time in Denver would soon be over. After year two, he never made another final roster in the NFL. Some call him the biggest first round bust of the last decade, right next to Johnny Manziel. With the 51st pick in the 2016 NFL Draft, the New York J-E-T-S Jets select quarterback Christian Hackenberg, Penn State. Maybe the most forgotten about second round quarterback that I've ever covered, Christian Hackenberg was once a hailed five-star recruit who went on to have a tough up and down career at Penn State. Like Paxton Lynch, some scouts saw that he had major potential but Hackenberg was wildly inconsistent and made crucial mistakes. Right away, it was clear that he wasn't ready for the pros, as the Jets listed him as the fourth string quarterback to start his rookie year. By the end of that season, he was only activated on the game day roster once, and he never managed to play a single down in his NFL career. He didn't even play a snap of pro football until he was in the AAF four seasons after being drafted. Football Outsiders pulled data on every second-round quarterback drafted between 1994 and 2016. 
Of the 25 guys selected in this round, during that stretch of time, there was only one quarterback that failed to play in a single game. That was Christian Hackenberg. Man, I know that Paxton Lynch being a first rounder only lasting two years is bad, but that's pretty brutal for the Jets. Once you get past the first two rounds in most NFL drafts, these mid to late round guys are usually backups at best, and rounds three through seven in 2016 was mostly what you'd expect. Third rounder Jacoby Brissett turned into a solid backup and a decent journeyman game manager. Cody Kessler started a handful of games, but wasn't great. Connor Cook was out of the league after a year. Cardell Jones had a ton of hype out of Ohio State, but only played one career game. Kevin Hogan carved out a career as a journeyman backup for some years. Nate Sudfield only played in four games. Jake Rudock completed three career passes. Brandon Allen and Jeff Driscoll both have been backups that were featured as starters for a handful of games for both the Bengals and Broncos. And the last quarterback drafted, Brandon Doughty, never played in a game. But if we go back to the fourth round, one dude was a major hit, and that was Mississippi State quarterback Dak Prescott. Prescott was actually a name rising up draft boards back in 2016, when just a month before draft night, he was arrested on suspicion of a DUI. This moment led to some questioning of his judgment, and therefore scared some teams away from taking him in the second and third round. What's crazy is the arrest was questionable in the first place, and months later, Dak received a not guilty verdict, but the damage was done in terms of his draft position. Wildly enough, the Cowboys would have never taken Prescott if it weren't for Denver beating them out to picking Paxton Lynch. And while Paxton Lynch found himself out of the league rather quickly, Dak Prescott was balling out in Dallas. After some huge performances in the preseason as a rookie, along with Tony Romo sustaining what would end up being his career-ending injury, Dak stepped in as the starter and led the Cowboys to a 13-3 record. He also earned a Pro Bowl nod, one Offensive Rookie of the Year, and put up some superb numbers. And since then, everything's changed for Dak. He's no longer seen as the mid-round pick who came out of nowhere. He's held to the same standard as many of the top quarterbacks in the league. I don't think anyone outside of Dallas would say that he's a top five talent, but it's hard not to respect what he's accomplished. So all in all, this is what it looks like when you compare the 2016 QB class to the other classes in the same decade. Overall, it's sort of an underwhelming class that ranks somewhere in the middle in terms of the number of pro bowlers and overall talent. Also, I ranked 2018's class a little higher just because of how good Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen have been. Considering the top two picks haven't been as good as expected, along with Paxton Lynch and Christian Hackenberg, if it weren't for Dak, this class would be a lot worse. The only other fourth rounder to write home about would be Kirk Cousins, both of whom have had surprisingly impressive careers. Now, you can make an argument for which of these guys you would roll with, but one thing's for sure, you don't see many former fourth round picks making plays like this. Prescott stumbles, <laughs> stays afloat, looks downfield, fires deep downfield, and 